Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back with another segment. Uh, today's segment's going to be on your uh, two-stroke uh, motors, uh, basically. You got many out there, you know, like uh, uh, two in particular that I've been around as the Ryobi and the uh, um, and the Robin RC, the Zona. That's another one. But um, I don't do many segments on these. Um, I dabble in them every now and then. They're a great motor, plenty of power. They make all kinds of upgrades for them. Um, you know, they all started off as basically lawn care um, engines, and we've adapted them, you know, to our RC hobby. And, uh, you know, they got chrome covers and intakes and tuned pipes and, you know, a header, and, and, uh, and they range in all different CCs, you know. So... This one here in particular is a Roven 26cc motor. Um, they got plenty of power and uh, nice and reliable, but they're boring, okay? They're, they're all the same. You can be out running your RC car with this motor in it and your neighbor could be out there with his weed whacker and I don't know, there's just no glamor to them, you know? So I said, hey, what would happen? How would you make this more glamorous? What could you do to it? So, anyways, I get these ideas in my head. And <laughs> they, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, I, get, I built some wacky stuff, you know. And uh, these ideas just got to ooze out every now and then. So I thought about it. And I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to make something so freaking sick it ain't funny. So, here's what I did. Set this over here. And we'll set this up here. Okay. What do you think? I've actually put together eight of the two strokes and made a two-stroke V8 out of it. And I was inspired by this when I actually heard, um, there's a video floating around on YouTube about a guy who took an Ebenrude two-stroke V8 and he put it into a car and uh, it, it sounded like a top fuel dragster. And I thought, wow, that would be so cool, you know. So long story short, I had these ideas. I said, hey, you know, what would happen if we took these weed whacker motors and put them together? So what I did was, I searched online on eBay, and there was a guy selling the Ryobi 25.4 cc uh, motors, and he had a bunch of them, and they were like 25 bucks a piece. So I said, hey, you know, it's worth a shot to try it and get it out of my system. So that's what I did. And uh, and the carburetors, these came with no carbs. I had to figure it out. And I bought these carburetors just because most of these are kind of sideways and it would be hard to set up the throttle linkages on them and I believe these are off a uh, leaf blower is what these came from and uh, I set them up I went and bought a lot of stuff at my local hardware store Home Depot and I you know, these little eyelets they screw into the wall and I just screwed them down in through the uh, the carburetor ports and then linked them together so I get a lot of pop when I open up they all they all float together at the same time and I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Dubro links, you know, that's what I put on here to kind of hold them in place. And uh, so, if my calculations are right, this is going to be around a 208cc motor, and uh, which is it's pretty it's pretty big for a weed whacker or a leaf blower, but it would be it would be insane. And um, I put a lot of it together with, like I say, stuff I bought at the hardware store. This here was your straight tubing, and I went and got a tubing bender and made some zoomy headers for it real quick. This here square tubing that I had bent and made plates and walled the, the tubing together for my intake manifold. And uh, I learned a lot. Um, as far as the uh, the configured setup, it's just a two, two inch uh, by eighth inch piece of... Uh, aluminum and I had set the head gaskets on here where they needed to be and cut out the holes and then put the uh, two-stroke ports in them 
and bolted them right through. And uh, it's, uh, the work was 99% done. I just had to reconfigure everything. So I cut, you know, one end off each crankshaft and put the counterweight together and welded them together to, to tie up the space so it's smaller. And you can still see it's, it's pretty good size. Um, and as far as my spark, I decided to use, instead of the magnetos, I'd have to have four in the front and four in the back. And which still can be done, but I thought I would upgrade it a little bit more. And this is a distributor off a uh, 99, 2000 uh, Chevrolet pickup truck, um, 5.7 liter. And I chose it because it has a nice flat cap and has a, it's real short and kind of small. There's not a big, huge electronic distributor hanging out there. And, uh, and uh, you know, your spark plug wires come out the sides. So it, it would tighten things up a little bit. So I took the distributor and it had an electronic trap switch in there that runs from your computer. And I tore all that out of there and I went and got a points conversion kit. Um, what it does is it takes your old points distributors from your, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, and early 70s cars, and it converts it to electronic ignition with the trap switch, just like I had. And uh, so I cut the distributor off and, you know, kind of retrofitted that and reconfigured it to fit the front. So I have a rotor in here that spins around and then my top dead center. This will be number one, and I made it so it's adjustable here, so I can move it and lock it in position. Now, um, you know, as far as a hobby goes, you know, we, we, we scratch built a lot of stuff, but I figured this in here would, uh, you know, not really over the edge, but it's I built some V8s before in the past, and I've learned a lot. I'm no machinist by trade, don't get me wrong. These, you know, everything has to be pretty much hand made when you built something like this and I don't have a lot of time in it but nor a lot of money for that matter when you consider a um, a Conley small block is thirteen thousand five hundred dollars you know for their dressed up kit yeah that's a lot of that's a lot of dough and for a couple of hundred bucks I put this together now this is a piece of exhaust pipe that covers my crankcase and underneath this, I had cut the cranks and sort of like pinned them together. I put a female slot in one side and a male slot on the other. So every 45 degrees, I have a piston firing on here. And uh, it's, uh, like I say, I put it all together as far as, you know, what I had in my head, you know. And... Uh, you know, these are the Ryobi motors, only have a two bolt head on them. And if anybody's familiar with, um, you know, your your two stroke motors, four bolts are the ones that have, they, they go clear up to, I think, a 50cc on them. And being that this was, you know, a small investment, I chose to use the Ryobi um, motors and go from there. And if it works, Maybe I'll upgrade to a, uh, um, you know, like a bigger CC four bolt head. It would be easier, easier to work with. You can see down in here, we only got one bolt here, but these are connected right down to my main saddles. And uh, inside, I learned a lot about two stroke motors. Um, you just don't pull the charge in through the intake port and pop it through the piston out the exhaust it gets sucked into the lower crankcase. So they have to be sealed in there because it's part of your induction system. And uh, that was a little tricky, but um, you know, when you're hand making stuff and you get in a hurry and you know, there's a lot of things I would make, make something and I would uh, sit home and think about it after I build it. And then I would just go throw that away and start over again. And, um, so this is just a simple, you know, there's <laughs> your brake line or fuel line uh, um, ends off your cars. And I just put a piece of quarter inch rod through it and everything works good. 
so as far as the, cl the, the clutch setup on the back, I used a regular flywheel that has the fins on it and all that. And uh, balance was a big concern of mine because I don't have any machine shop, um, you know, tools or anything to balance stuff. So I consulted with a guy who does a lot of machine work and he said there's not a lot of weight throwing out on the end. So, you know, the only concern would be, would there be the magneto magnet that's in this that would probably throw it off. And uh, so, you know, the big question is, is will it run, you know? And uh, so to get the thing kind of like finished, I got a few more things to do. I got to tear it back apart, put gaskets in it, lube everything up. And I have to get some spark plug wires and a fuel source for it. And my 12 volts, you know, to run everything and a starter motor now this is what i've had laying around for years i got this years ago um it's a part of a window regulator for like a, a 280 uh, d mercedes benz and you know stuff like this i see things like this and i save it you know and i got this gear 20 years ago <laughs> you know and i threw it in a box and said you know someday i might use that and guess what here i am using it and I'll tell you why, I'm glad I used, I saved it, because this here is a starter motor off a Tecumseh snowblower or lawnmower engine. And the gears, they mesh right up, you know, and as you can see, this starter kicks out, you know, so it starts it and then that's that. So I'm going to mount this on the back and the clutch holes will mount right up here so I'll have my clutch set up on it. And I'll go from there and... Um, We'll see if we'll see if it runs. That's all I can say. You know, it's a uh, it's pretty sick looking. Might be a little too much for a weed whacker, but man, it would be overkill. It would be the uh, the Tim Taylor Tool Time, you know, Bimford, uh, you know, heavy duty weed whacker. So, like I say, I'm calculating about 208 cc's, and you know, it's. I got a quarter scale project in mind that I've had for a while. And like I say, the Conley small block is just, you know, they start off about eight, nine, ten grand, somewhere around there. And that was a few years ago. And last I knew, you know, they're about 13, five and it, it, it's a lot of dough for a hobby. So anyways, if anybody out there was, you know, said they've never seen a, a, a V8 weed whacker motor before, now you can tell them you've seen one. A guy on YouTube built one. But uh, anyways, any questions, comments, or whatever, you know, hit me up. I'll try to get back and answer them as soon as possible. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to stay on tinkering with the build here. And then get back to maybe running some of my uh, my bruisers and, and uh, other stuff that I've got laying around before the snow hits. And... Uh, so I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Um, this is what I do on my days off. So anyways, like, share, subscribe if you like to. And show your friends and whatever. Any questions, comments, hit me up. So anyways, this is Danny signing off. Adios.